Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. And we got a shout out to Carter. Happy birthday and congratulations on your graduation. The future is now and it is today. Good luck with it. Today we're going to talk about liberal minds. What's going on inside their brains and crime free America? Hmm? <laughs> The big sig tig. Boom. Let's just dive right in. What the heck's going on? Pope Francis repeats a homophobic slur. Keep gay dudes out of seminaries. All right. Here's an image of the uh, Pope. Pope has yet again used a disparaging slur against gay people behind closed Vatican doors less than a month after apologizing for doing the same thing. According to ANSA, the leading news agency in Italy, the pontiff reiterated the vulgar term while speaking to Roman priests Tuesday, stating, There is an air of F-A-G-G-O-T-S-ness in the Vatican. Again, definitely not saying that. You're going to cancel me for that. As he expressed, it'd be better for young gay men to steer clear of seminaries. Okay, so ultra-conservative view there. No doubt it's all a bit disappointing, and with no repeat apology as of yet, it'll be interesting to see how this situation is handled moving forward. For now, when asked about Tuesday's meeting, the Vatican Press Office referred to a statement that highlights the Pope's reiteration of the importance of welcoming gay people into the church, while also emphasizing caution regarding their admission into seminaries. Yeah, he welcomes them, but he also says, like, you know, you should not sin, and what is sinful about it? It's immoral sexual behavior. Go ahead. Go on to BibleHub.com and type in immoral and then just look at all the different things. All right, moving right along. Scholastic Kids Focused Read With Pride Guide demonizes anyone without a rainbow identity. Oh, goodness. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and have a dive in here. The Scholastic Book Fair used to be an exciting time for kids and a place where parents could feel safe knowing their kid would have a world of interesting educational and enlightening reading experiences. Unfortunately, like so many innocent joys of childhood, the LGBT activists have taken their safety away. Scholastic has fully embraced not only gay and transgender education and friction for kids at preschool age, but above the full spectrum of extreme transgender and sexual ideology to the left. Sorry, not friction for kids. I was trying to internalize that in my mind. Fiction for kids. I was like, is this Germany? When they have that little exploration room, is that what they're talking about? Good God. Just in time for Pride Month, the Children's Publishing Company released its Read with Pride resource guide. The guide associated with the website uh, lists a book and resources all, as the left loves to boast, unapologetically send parents, educators, and kids towards the most extreme left-wing sources on LGBT ideology. The guide directs to websites like Everyday Feminism, Teen Vogue, Rainbow Book List, and the Washington Post, and provides a long list of other LGBT activist organizations and references. It presents a series of scare tech statistics sorry, provided by the Trevor Project to justify the need for such expansive and dedicated resources. All indicate a child's home and their families are a danger, requiring outside intervention and support. Ew, that's not good. That's not true. The main purpose, of course, is the list of books available for kids from ages 0 to 8 and 12 plus. The books are identified by which specific groups they focus on, ranging from gay and lesbian to so-called queer, non-binary, transgender, and asexual. Gone are the days of highlighting books featuring two dads, or astonishing as it is to think about this simple controversy of breaking out definitions of gay, bisexual, and transgender in a glossary. Now kids get dozens of sex and gender options to choose from, including queer, genderqueer, sapphic, panromantic, pan and two-spirit. They also get a new term to designate anyone who isn't queer. Allo cisit, which the Read with Pride God defines as people whose gender and sexuality are privileged by society. So you have cisgender, uh, allo, het, I don't even know. Like, they're just making stuff up. The term combines allosexual, meaning a person who is not asexual. Okay. So why would you need a term to describe something that's opposite to what is not typically known, historically known as normal, or cisgender, someone whose current gender matches the gender they were assigned at birth, 
and heterosexual, which they don't bother to define at all. The content is dominated by the abstract concept of gender, which is defined as socially constructed category for dividing humans. Dividing humans, that's exactly what they're doing. Divide and conquer. Keep them all barking at each other. What happens when the rainbow kind of separates? The spectrum gets too big, and then the spectrum start blocking off into like red versus orange, yellow versus blue, because it eventually will happen. Oh, we don't like what you said. Look at the church. How many forms of Christianity are there? You know, Baptist, Pentecostal, Anglican, United, Catholic, you know, Protestant, whatever. I don't know. There's only one, the Bible. Just read the Bible. That's it. Try and get a good version. New Living Translation's decent. If you really want, like, good English, the ESV, English Standard Version's all right as well. If you don't want to read like the King James, which is like a little bit old style. All right, so whatever. Uh, books, this classic book fair is poisoned. Lime makes Spokane Pride Crosswalk a no-go zone after three teens charged with felonies over skid marks. Unbelievable. So here's a couple of kids here. Uh, they made some skid marks on a crosswalk. So I guess, you know, laying rubber to road is fine uh, but as soon as you enter this rainbow zone if you attempt any effort to lay some rubber to the pavement you'll be prosecuted in response to acts of alleged vandalism on a pride crosswalk in spokane washington by means of scooter skid marks lime scooter rental company has enacted a no-go zone on the colorful pavement now those riding in the area will have their vehicles come to a stop if the onboard gps detects that they are within a certain distance of the rainbow mural this comes after three teens were arrested and charged with felonies for making those skid marks. Unbelievable. Give these kids a break. Who cares? Those three suspects were arrested over what's being called widespread damage inflicted upon the crosswalk, which cars, bikes, and scooters all drive over. Russell and Turco, 19, and his two minor accomplices were each charged with one count of first-degree malicious mischief, which is a Class B felony in the state. This comes after the crosswalk had been set fire to in May. Good Lord. According to the National Desk, Lime created the no-go zone on June 7th. At a time when our teams had Lime are beginning pride celebrations around the globe, it is disturbing to see the hate taking place in Spokane. It's not hate. It's indifference, okay? They just don't care about it. They don't hate it. The burning of it, that's likely hate. All right, so here it is. Here's obvious. Like, you can go up and you can deface these uh, monuments. You know, free Palestine, support Hamas. That's free speech. But it it's a hate crime, absolutely hateful if you were to lay rubber to pavement on top of one of these colorful things. My question is, is what if you're driving and you're looking at the thing and it distracts you and you run off the road? Is there a liability lawsuit there? Potentially. So uh, let's go ahead and have a look at this. Didn't even take 48 hours. Delray Beach held an LGBTQ plus ceremony for their freshly repainted mural on Saturday. This morning there's a fresh set of tire marks on it. Didn't even take 48 hours. All right, let's just have a look at this. I don't know. Maybe the paint is uh, causing the rubber to strip off of the off of the tire. Who knows? It's almost as if people don't like these murals or something. They just keep painting more. Got to push the propaganda. Yeah, I mean it is absolute propaganda. It's ridiculous. It's a small percentage of the population. It's becoming uh, a little bit of a fad. It's trending. You know what I mean? And it will trend out. All right. What else we got? Boom. All right. This is why. Okay. And it's leading to this, people. And it's leading to something even worse than this person with obvious mental health issues. We'll let her speak for herself. But uh, it's leading to maps. Okay. Pedophilia, minor attractive persons, they're the next to get included into this fringe. Okay. And it's going to happen. Mark my words. All right. Let's check this one out. I am a robot or android of sorts. I am not human and I lack the ability to fully act human because since I spawned in this human body, I have not been able to access the internet and download new ways of acting. 
I have transcripts for every way of acting and reacting to different things. And I lack new ones due to not being able to connect to the internet anymore. So there, I cannot always react accordingly to new things because I cannot look it up anymore and do not know how to act and react. Alright, so there it is. She's not human. She's a robot and she's obviously quite serious, but it's not performance art. But she's a young girl. She has an imagination. And guess what? Kids believe in Santa Claus. Kids believe in the Easter Bunny. Kids believe in the Tooth Fairy. Why? Because they're easily fooled and manipulated. That's why kids can, and teenagers fall into cults and stuff like that. Well, guess what this is, people? Analyze it. It doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to figure out that this thing is going to explode. All right, uh, yeah, and here's another reason, because they're supporting uh, Palestine, Queers for Palestine, the hashtag. Well, guess what? The imams, the leaders in the uh, Islamic world, Palestinian imams, will not accept a single homosexual on the land of Palestine. Homosexuals should be thrown headfirst from the rooftop of the tallest building. Do you see that? So if you do have any, or if we do have any uh, people of the alternative lifestyle tuning in, well, since Hamas's October 7th massacre, movements such as Gays for Palestine and Queers for Palestine have become an integral part of the pro-Hamas rallies in the West, supporting the genocidal slogan, From the River to the Sea. Below is a collection of videos of prominent Palestinian Islamic political and cult cultural figures stating that Palestine people will not accept a single homosexual on the land of Palestine and that homosexuals should be thrown headfirst off the rooftop of the tallest building. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, tons of people just exclaiming it. All of the leaders saying uh, it's absolutely disgusting. It's immoral. We will not support it. And not only that, we will destroy you. So, go ahead. Keep supporting Hamas and Palestine. Go for it. You will see your demise. It's literally a snake eating its tail. Uh, Massachusetts' proposed bill seeks to redefine parenthood and legalize the practice of baby selling in the name of parentage equality. Okay, new one. We've got P-E now. D-E-I-P-E-D-E-D-P-E-I, -E -E whatever. On June 12th, the Massachusetts House is expected to vote on a bill that would allow mothers to exchange their children for money that is engaged in baby selling under the name parentage equality. The parentage Quality bill seeks to redefine parenthood. Parenthood is re recognized on its natural biological basis, or in cases of adoption, justice for a child who has suffered loss by providing them with a safe, loving home. The bill redefines it on the basis of a person's intent to be a parent of a child. In doing so, it strips all mentions of mothers and fathers from parentage law, replacing these vital familial roles with gender erased language. Finally, and most concerning, under H. 4672, Massachusetts would allow for commercial surrogacy, both in cases wherein the woman carrying the child is genetically unrelated to the child, and in cases where she is exchanging her biological child for money. So, basically put an ad up in uh, Craigslist saying, listen, I would love to have a child, and someone could put an ad in and say, listen, I would love to uh, grow a child for somebody. Anybody interested? 25 grand. You got a deal. Let's get some lawyers and a contract. Yeah, so it's going to legalize baby selling, so watch out for that, people in Massachusetts, because the sky's falling. And this here is uh, Chicken Little. Let's go ahead and have a listen to this guy. So this is a regular liberal from Colorado. Let's see what he has to say. You can read his sign, uh, F-U-C-K Israel, and he stands with Hamas, making it very clear. My name's Michael. I'm from uh, Colorado. I'm here today to say, stand with Hamas. And also, fuck this. Wow, okay, so uh, sorry I didn't get that blurt that one out uh, but yeah so he's very strongly opinionated about how he feels and uh, a lot of people feel the same way he does and it's absolutely incorrect shouldn't feel that way i mean i don't feel that way necessarily about hamas chicago's progressive mayor brandon johnson spent thirty thousand dollars on makeup during his first year in office what the heck all right, so uh, Mayor Brandon Johnson managed to burn through 30000 of personal grooming in one year, most of the money being spent on makeup. Well, perhaps he's had a lot of press engagements, and he wants to look fresh. And uh, by the look of him, he definitely does want to look fresh. But, uh, I mean, maybe it's not the actual makeup. It's the makeup designer. And the question is, does he know her? Are they related? Here is the individual that is... Uh, 
getting all that cash. Denise Malloy, makeup artist, self-professed skincare enthusiast. All right, so let's go ahead and investigate that. Illegal aliens jump in front of cars to blackmail New York drivers. All right, okay, so first uh, they're doing all these schemes to get in. They're doing fake muggings and robberies and stuff like that so they can claim uh, immediate citizenship. They're obviously just coming across the border without any care. They're collecting all kinds of money from the taxpayer. Well, they're setting up, like, they're buying stuff from bodegas and setting up shop on the streets as well. And the cops would come and sweep it up, and then they would just show back up doing it again. Well, they got a new scheme. Instead of purse snatching, they're just going to jump in front of a car, and they're going to blackmail the drivers. Like, hey, look, uh, just give me some money, and I won't call the cops. They love to play games. One of their favorites is finding ways to make money with minimal effort. Yeah, this game has recently regained popularity among illegal aliens in Brooklyn, New York, as they found that jumping in front of moving vehicles can make their money if they are lucky enough to get hit. Yeah, okay, so anyway. What else are they doing in New York? This lady's there. Let's listen to what she got to say. So in case you didn't hear that. So yeah, basically, if you go to New York City and you're a migrant and you're like, hey, listen, I'm a, I'm a chick, and you're actually a dude, uh, they'll be like, hey, no problem. Listen, just go uh, right around back here to the hospital and uh, explain to them in whatever language you can. And they'll go ahead and lop and chop and stuff and whatever. All right, so let's get a look at the face of horror of our president, Joe Biden, as the music kicks in and everyone starts grooving and his brain goes into overdrive trying to figure out exactly what to do. And just a few people down, we have Kamala and her husband, and then it looks like a female with a beard. Interesting. P.T. Barnum. Calling P.T. Barnum. Like, to me, it's like, what's running through his mind is like, what is, what am I looking at here? What is this? What the heck is going on? Bearded man in a dress that widely experienced problem in the black community? I don't think so. Yeah, so I don't even know what kind of event here. There's so much to unpack. Bearded dude in a dress, Biden's frightening smile and frozen face. Doug Emhoff is worried about something and Kamala is just grooving. Uh, Doug is Kamala's husband. All right, cool. Whatever. Let's, uh, oh, there's another one. They're sat down now. Let's go ahead and have a look at this. Has anything changed? Oh, old school and say, clap your hands, everybody. And everybody, clap your hands to the people on this side. Clap your hands to the people right here. Clap your hands to the people up top. Clap your hands. Watch this. Hey, listen, I mean, not everyone can groove. We saw that in the previous video. But this guy can't even keep the beat. And he looks terrified. What is going on? Why does he look so scared? What's in his mind? And eh, maybe this. FBI's latest data shows historic drop in crime, says uh, Garland. Reported incidents of violent crime dropped 15% according to FBI data. Wow, unbelievable. Who believes it? Any raise of hands here? Well, uh, yeah, the first three months of 2024 saw a continued drop in levels of violent crime and murder across the country. According to the data released by the FBI on Monday, a trend that Attorney General Merrick Garland called historic. Yeah, absolutely. Unbelievable. Like, truly unbelievable. Especially with, like, the news stories. Like, we've been reporting on tons of murder and crime on this channel. Report 
Reported incidents of violent crime dropped 15% between January and March of this year compared to the same period last year, according to the FBI's uniform crime reporting data. Murders dropped by more than 26% in the same time period. The data shows the FBI has not rece- released details about the number of incidents for the categories of crime. It will do so when 80% participation levels are met, the agency said. So perhaps the data is lagging, but I mean, there's another theory uh, that I kind of hold dear. I think it's like, uh, you know, letting people out and not charging them. We've reported on that so many times. Most recently, there's a, a woman who uh, has a long criminal record, and she basically said, I'm going to kill somebody, and I feel like killing people. And the judge was like, yeah, no, she's okay. She's, she's cool. We're going to let her out. And then she went out and killed a three-year-old, stabbed him. So what's the deal? They're letting these people out. They're not prosecuting them. So if there's no prosecution, there's no crime. And it's as simple as that. There is no historic decline. It'll be revised, okay? Just like Biden's economics, okay? Every year jo- or every month, job numbers come out. And the following month, they get revised. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, well, CPI came out today. It was good. It's decreasing, and all the markets loved it. Go ahead. Check out at Sigma Tiger Trade if you're interested in all that kind of stuff. Sigma Tiger, signing out. Happy birthday, Carter.